Today I'm driving through Tokyo to see just how many cool video game stores I can find. I have a list of about 10 or so, and I'm gonna see how many of those I can actually get to before they close. All right, let's go. Game hunting is so cool in Japan because you never know what you're going to find. One common misconception that I often hear though is that game hunting in Tokyo is so much more expensive than game hunting in the countryside. Game prices are escalating on a global scale. It's not just in Tokyo and it's not just in your city. It's wherever you go in the world. If it's a video game or it says the word game on it, people know that it's expensive and they know what it's worth. And no matter where you go in Japan, they're still gonna be expensive. Is it too expensive? I don't know, I'll let you watch and I'll let you be the judge. Let's roll. Yo! To start off the day, I'm gonna visit a store that's pretty local to me and it doesn't get as much foot traffic, so I figured it was a perfect place to start. All right, to the right here, we've got a glass display cabinet that has a bunch of Nintendo handhelds. There's the lime green 2DS, the orange and white one, there's the blue and black. These are pretty nice, and the price tags are about what you'd expect to find in these stores right now. Ooh, there's the special edition new 3DS XL with the Super Smash Brothers design, a new 3DS with the Peach faceplates, and a DSi XL. Moving down from there, we've got a bunch of Game Boy Colors that are all priced kind of differently, which is a little bit random. Then you've got the Midnight Blue Game Boy Advance, which is actually a Toys R Us model that only came out in Japan. Got some SPs, the Famicom one, and oh man, check this out. This is the Pokemon Special Edition Limited Quantity SP, but man, that's like $1,500, so it's a little bit out of my price range. Next up, we've got the Mother 3 Game Boy Micro. That is a sweet piece to add to any collection, but that's also like a thousand bucks. The store also has a ton of N64s. There's the purple, clear blue, and going upstairs is actually where you're gonna find all the junk. So I wanted to take a quick video of that for you guys too. There you've got a bunch of Super Nintendos and original Nintendos. There's a Super Nintendo in the box for like 25 bucks. Then there's a Nintendo as well for 20. And down here is where I usually find like controllers and different parts, so it's always worth a quick check. All right, so that's it for store number one. I didn't actually see anything there that I particularly wanted, but you never know with these places. That's the cool thing. Um, I still had a really good time looking around, seeing all the junk, seeing all the cameras and the broken games and all that stuff. It's always a good time. So let's go onward to the next stop. Before we go any further, just a quick message from today's sponsor, me again. Seriously though, I don't have any sponsorship deals to talk about. I just wanted to take a moment to say that if you could like this video and subscribe to my channel, it would mean the world to me and it would allow me to continue making videos like this. And it would let me know that you guys like this sort of content. All right, with that out of the way, let's continue. This next stop is just a little ways up the street and they usually have a much bigger selection here. I took some time digging through the junk where I found a couple of Game Boy Colors, but the battery contacts were totally fried on these things, which made me a little bit hesitant to actually buy them, but I decided because they're so cheap, I'll take the risk. And I left that store two Game Boys richer. Now this is definitely one of my go-to shops, but the thing with Hard Off is, as you may have guessed, it's always hit and miss. You never know if there's gonna be gold that day or if there's gonna be Nothing. Uh, luckily, there's still a bunch more in the area, so I'm gonna keep going and moving and just try to find one with some really cool stuff. Next stop was a hard off that is known for having a lot of toys as well, so this is the type of store I could get lost in for hours digging through all the old Nintendo paraphernalia. It didn't take long before I found a Game Boy Color in the glass case for a really good price. I saw that $33 Game Boy and I was like, give me that! that, that that's mine. That one's mine. And that was it for this store. So just to mix things up a little bit, this is another chain of stores called Wattman. It's another big chain in Japan. There's not quite as many of them as there are hard offs and book offs, uh, but it's still a pretty good chain nonetheless. I sometimes am able to find some really cool stuff here. Store number five is a hard off superstore, so let's have a look around. Remember 
to take breaks. As I'm game hunting, I find myself getting tired and worn out sometimes. So I often will stop into like a sushi restaurant and grab myself some lunch and fuel up a little bit before you continue because man, it can be really addicting hunting for these games, but you gotta remember that uh, at the end of the day, your body's more important and you really have to take care of that. So night has come and I'm only able to hit up six of the 10 stores I initially wanted to go to today. But on the bright side, this place is a jackpot. Full-sized arcade cabinets? Count me in. These cabinets were sick and they were all for sale. I couldn't believe it. This place has a cardboard cutout of a hard off employee, so now you too can live out your dreams of working here. It's a super complex with just about any recycle shop you can imagine. It's located in Hachioji and it's called Eco Town. So if you're ever able to come to Japan and you want to check this place out, I highly recommend it. Unfortunately, the prices on the Game Boys were a little bit too high for my liking, but it's really hard to complain when there's this much stock. This is where I actually found the Game Boy Color Pokemon that I was looking for. But man, these prices are out of control. I guess I can't blame them because this is one of those locations that's you know, still in Tokyo and it's still a pretty touristy spot, but man, that Game Boy was looking really good and I wish I could have afforded it, but at nearly $400, I think it was just a little bit out of my reach. All right, that's it for this hunt, but thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the next adventure.